guys, welcome back to my channel. We are going to do another time lapse and chat today. Today's chat is going to be um, much less introspective, though, and more uh, concrete and answering several questions that have come in in the last few weeks. Most of them are all kind of centered around pricing and copyright. So, some nice, juicy illustration topics for you today. And uh, before I dive into those, I will mention uh, what I'm actually working on, and that is the second part of a personal piece. If you saw the last video that I did, it was a painting of some thistles and me talking a lot about my feelings. What else is new? Um, but this one uh, is going to be some apples and some carrots, and it's for a project that I'm working on with a designer friend of mine. I talked a little bit about it in that last video. Just uh, we made up kind of an imaginary project or imaginary product. And now we are making the um, packaging, designing the, the branding and the packaging for it. And uh, my friend Stephanie, who's the designer, making up the designer half of uh, this team, she and I decided to do it backwards where I'm doing the illustration first and then she's creating the design around the illustration. So um, I will be sharing what the, the kind of final, well, I guess not the final, final product, but the final thing that I made with these illustrations, which is a, you know, pretty intricate repeat pattern. Uh, I'll be sharing that on Instagram in uh, the next week or so. So be sure you're following me over there. Um, and then I'll share, of course, the final project whenever Stephanie and I finish it. But for now, you're just going to watch me paint um, these uh, apples and carrots. And um, the reason the project is apples and carrots and thistles is because we, um, the th one of the themes uh, of the project, of our fake product, is um, the different astrology signs. And this one is Aries. Uh, this product, this thing that I'm making the illustrations for is the, the Aries one. And Aries, um, some of the, the symbols and the floral stuff that went along with it that I could find um, included thistles and carrots and apples. Um, I'm not like especially into astrology or really into it at all. I do have friends that are really into it. And so I hear about it from them and there's lots of, um, symbols that are associated with it and like kind of a, a rich, um, symbolic language, I guess. And that was part of what attracted me to it in terms of like coming up with an idea or some parameters for the project. So I'm not like particularly into astrology. Um, but, uh, yeah, it had some, some really great symbolism. So, um, that's why we're doing the carrots and the apples today. And then the thistles were done last time. And I'm using pretty much the same, um, supplies that I used last as last time. So watercolor colored pencil, um, and I'm working on uh, hot pressed paper. So um, that's it. That's what's going on with the project. So um, now you can either um, watch me paint and tune out the, uh, the answers to these questions if you're not interested in that, or if you're mostly here for the answers to the pricing and copyright questions, um, then, um, and not, you know, you don't really care about seeing the art, then you can, you know, turn off the art or I, I don't know, you make your, you make your decision. You do you, <laughs> you do whatever you need to do. Um, and we are going to go ahead and, uh, dive into these questions. So the first one is, uh, from an anonymous viewer. These are all questions, by the way, that I have received, um, through my, um, well, not all, most of them are questions that I've received either through Instagram DM or, um, or via email, my questions form. And, um, pretty much all of these have been edited in some way, either for brevity or for clarity, um, just to, to make the, the questions themselves a little bit more, um, succinct and clear. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> On to the first question now, really, really, um, this is from an anonymous question asker and we'll call this person M. All right, M's question is, I've been approached by a client who is self-publishing a book and wants to know my commercial rates for a book illustration. The challenge is that they don't have a list or a description of the concepts that they want illustrated, so I don't know how complex the illustrations will be or even how many will be included in the project as a whole. My main question is, how do you provide an estimate or price range when you have no idea about the concept or the quantity? So uh, when this happens to me, uh, well, first, first I will say that this usually happens with the client, kind of like you're describing, someone who's self-publishing, um, who maybe doesn't really have 
uh, experience with working with an illustrator before, this kind of open-ended question is pretty common in that instance. Uh, and whenever that does happen to me, I just try to give a very, very broad price range. So they haven't given you a lot of specific information to work from in terms of coming up with a quote. So you don't really get to give them super specific information to work from in terms of a price. So, um, you know, it would be nice to just reply and say, no, I need additional information, but just try to give them the, the broadest range that you can. So specifically uh, in this instance, since this is for book interior illustration and not a children's book, I would quote on a per illustration uh, basis and again giving a very broad range. So something in the $200 to $2,000 range per illustration depending on the level of detail in the given illustration and how and where it would be used within the book. So for example whether it's a spot illustration or a full page illustration. Uh, and you can, of course, tell the client that you'll be able to give them an exact quote once you have uh, more detail and more information about the actual scope of the project. So 200 to 2000 is a humongous range and one that should give a client uh, at least an idea or a sense of what to expect, especially if you explain, you know, the, the spot illustration, a smaller illustration that's only going to be used, you know, it's not going to be as detailed, it's not going to take as long to make, and it will only be used in a smaller capacity in the book is probably going to be towards the lower end of that range versus something that would be, you know, a whole page or a spread or something that's like super, super complicated would be towards the higher end of that range. So I would just, you know, give them that ballpark and tell them you'll be able to give them something more concrete once they have more concrete details for you. Uh, M also had two other questions. Uh, number one, what stage should the book be in before my work begins? For example, should the book be written and fully designed in a layout before I begin illustration work? So um, I have very little book experience personally. I have really just contributed some illustrations to books, um, but I've never illustrated an entire book from start to finish. Uh, so from what I understand though, uh, yes, the book should be fully written before illustration begins. Um, I don't know specifically about the layout and whether that needs to be finalized before the illustration, but I can say from my experience with magazine illustration and packaging illustration, pretty much always the container uh, that the illustration is going to go in, whether it's, you know, a quarter page illustration on a magazine or a full page illustration on a magazine or a, um, a small illustration on packaging or a wraparound illustration on packaging, the exact container for the illustration is, is pretty much always built when I uh, am brought into the picture. So it, you know, if you're going to illustrate um, I don't know, two kids playing catch, but you don't know the aspect ratio, whether it's going to be, you know, horizontal or vertical. You don't know how big, whether they want a fully rendered background. Like you just can't really, you can't really go anywhere unless you know what the end uh, purpose for the illustration is going to be. Um, the one exception I would say to that is that if this, you know, since this is book interior and it's not, you know, like a full on picture book with, um, you know, potentially having multiple um, spreads or illustrations that would fill up an entire page, you know, maybe this person just wants 10 spot illustrations and they don't know exactly where they're going to go or, um, you know, how much of the page they're going to take up, but they just know they want you to do 10 square spot illustrations. I guess that could potentially work, but um, from, from my perspective, from what I uh, have experienced in other areas of the illustration industry, and from what I've heard from you know friends who have illustrated books, it um, yes, it is good to have the manuscript fully approved, and it's, it's more uh, kind of standard practice to have the manuscript fully approved before illustration work begins, and um, yeah, it would be really helpful to have the... Um, the layout approved as well. And, you know, in the end, if the layout's not approved and the client is having you start an illustration, ultimately they would be the one who would have to pay for it if changes were made down the road. So just communicating to the client that you do need to know exactly what the parameters are um, and, you know, explaining to them, you know, one concrete example would be that one that I just mentioned of the, you know, whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical, um, that will hopefully make it kind of clear to the client, like, oh, okay, yeah, they really do need to have this information before they get started. Uh, all right, M's last question is, what usage rights should my illustration have for a published book and how should this impact my pricing? 
Uh, so this is a super complicated question. Usage rights for books are uh, notoriously complicated, and that's part of why so many people who illustrate books end up having uh, book agents uh, or, you know, il illustration agents or book agents, somebody who really understands the illustration industry. And um, again, from what I understand, even people who have illustration agents, if they don't necessarily specialize in the book industry, they'll want to have like specifically a book agent. So this is a, a very... Um, kind of niche area that has a lot of levels to it. Um, and uh, it's one that I'm really not qualified to answer. So I'm not going to get into any specifics, unfortunately. Um, but I would say that if you want to have a research, if you don't have a book agent yourself and you're not able to get one at this point, um, I would say that the uh, Graphic Artist Guild Handbook for Pricing and Ethical Guidelines has a really great chapter on um, book illustration and uh, some of the kind of common practices in terms of usage rights and royalties and explaining all of that. Um, and then just a very simple thing to remember in any niche of the illustration industry, whether it's books or something else, is that um, more rights and a broader usage should always cost more money. All right, uh, on to the next question. Uh, this one is from Matt. And Matt's question is, I quoted a client 1,500 pounds for a set of 19 simple illustrated icons. They decided to pass on the project, which left me wondering whether I overcharged. What do you think? So I don't have a ton of details on what's going on here, but I will say that if the client just walked away or ghosted you or didn't give a counter offer to the 1500 pounds, I personally doubt that the main issue was overcharging. There may have been another reason that the client passed on the project. Maybe they ended up choosing a different stylistic direction or they paused on development altogether or they got busy or um, lastly, but you know, uh, frankly, uh, very likely they had no budget at all or something really, really low and unrealistic. So in my experience, uh, serious clients will never ghost you or reject your bid for charging a little too much. If they are a legitimate client who is planning to pay for the work that they want done, they will give you a counter offer if you just charged a little bit more, or quoted a little bit more than they were expecting to pay. And of course, it's up to you whether you want to take it or not. Um, you can always negotiate. Uh, but yes, in my experience, a client is not, a serious client is not usually going to ghost you just because the bid was a little bit higher than they were expecting. So now that we've established that quoting high doesn't usually scare off serious clients, which is why I tend to advocate for it, uh, we can look objectively at the number that you quoted. So uh, since these are super simple, um, as you've mentioned, I think in your description, or well, maybe I edited that part out, but in your original email, you mentioned that they were a really simple style um, app icons that would be used on an app and a website. Um, I'd probably quote it somewhere in the $100 to $200 range per icon. So if I do the currency conversion, it looks like at this moment where I am today, 1,500 pounds comes out to about $2,100 US, which means that the quote was $110 US per icon. So right in that range that I mentioned. And uh, yeah, no, in, in my opinion, the quote was actually on the lower end of the range, uh, since it's, you know, the range I mentioned is 100 to 200. So if you're quoting 110, that's on the lower end, not overcharging at all. So uh, this client probably had something else going on, like maybe they had a ridiculously low budget or some other reason that they passed on the project. All right, next question is from Clara. A client has requested a quote on 27 illustrations. They are a fast growing bakery and they want their products illustrated to use in their shop and their online store. The illustrations would also be used for promotional materials on social networks intended for a wider audience. Right now, they only operate in a single country in the EU. How much should I charge for 27 illustrations? What about if they expand the business and ship to other countries or open locations in other countries? How much should I charge then? So I would probably charge something in the range of 150 to 400 US per illustration for use in a single country only. Uh, I probably would also limit the number of locations that it could be used in. So I'd say something like maybe three brick and mortar locations uh, included in that price range. And uh, also included in that price range would be use online, provided that they were only selling to customers within that country. If these are super detailed illustrations, I'd aim for the higher end of the range. Uh, 
Now, uh, if the client expands either outside of the country or they open a greater number of locations, I'd put the range closer to 300 to 800 US. So usually when I'm in this kind of situation where a client wants to start with a smaller usage and then have the option to expand and have greater usage rights in the future, we would just include a clause for that in the contract to stipulate. So if they would pay $200, let's say, for the initial limited use, but the expanded use would cost 400, I would just write it into the contract that they would pay the balance, which would in this case be an additional $200 should they wish to obtain uh, more rights or broader rights in the future. All right, next question is from Marley. Marley asks, would you say that the GAG guide, the Graphic Artist Guild Handbook for Pricing and Ethical Guidelines, we just mentioned it a minute ago, uh, would you say that the GAG guide is a good resource for illustrators in general or just those in the US? So I, I think it's a good resource for illustrators in general, particularly uh, those uh, in, the, in Europe and in Canada. Um, since pricing is fairly similar uh, between the US, Canada, um, UK, and Europe, there, there definitely are some differences. I would say overall pricing in the GAG guide may be a little bit on the high end for the UK and for some of the EU, but it's probably a little bit on the low end for Scandinavia. So clients that I've had from Scandinavia have been some of the highest paying, even higher paying than US clients. So um, it's, it's all a little bit relative, but even even though that's the case, even though it's not like a perfect guide, um, it's kind of relative anywhere. It's relative in the US as well, depending on where you live in the US. And in my mind, yes, it is helpful to have the, the actual numbers, but what's even more helpful is just the kind of broad information that it gives you in terms of the price ranges. So it really helps to see, okay, this is like generally the range for children's book illustration. This is generally the range for editorial this is generally the range for packaging and you can get a sense for how those ranges relate to each other so um, then if you have a good idea of like what an editorial or a spot illustration costs in your country and say maybe it's 10% less or 20% less than it you might go for in the US and then you want to know how much packaging illustration runs in your country then you could you know proportionally decrease um, the amount that's in the gag guide to get a sense, just a baseline for what to go off of. So pricing is so challenging. It's so tricky. And it's something that so many of us really struggle with in terms of feeling confident about it, that in my mind, having more resources is always better. And, you know, it's ultimately something you're going to have to decide for yourself. So, um, if you're like me and you like to have a lot of information, um, you know, the gag guide, depending on where you get it and what edition you get, you know, if you get the previous edition, which is still be excellent, um, you know, you could get it for potentially a little bit cheaper. Some people might be able to find it in their library, but all in all, you're looking at something around $30, which is not nothing. But for me, it's one of those things that I just wish I had bought it sooner. I've said this so many times. Um, I would have saved so much pain and agony of like searching through weird pages of the internet trying to get clear uh, pricing information um, on illustration work if I had just had that. And I've since found lots of other resources like, you know, I something I've mentioned here a number of times is lightbox.info. And then of course, Jessica Hish has her Dark Art of Pricing Guide, both the original free PDF, which just kind of gives some broad rules for pricing and her updated PDF, which which has a lot of concrete fig figures as well and I think runs for about $15. So um, yes, I am highly in favor of just, you know, getting all of the resources, taking as much information in as you can um, and then kind of going from there. So yes, I do think it's worthwhile whether or not you're in the US. All right, next question is from Katie. How do you handle copyright with your clients? In what instances do you allow your copyright to be sold with the artwork and do you under any circumstance retain your own copyright? Uh, so copyright varies hugely from project to project, from client to client, industry to industry. Uh, really, it kind of depends on the end use of the illustration, what the illustration is needed for, whether you're kind of working off of existing intellectual property, uh, building out uh, existing intellectual property. There's so many factors that can go into this. So there's not like really a one concrete hard and fast rule that can you know be applied to every project. But I would say that for 
for me, um, generally my clients are licensing a particular use for a particular period of time rather than buying the copyright outright. So I pretty much always retain my copyright in all cases. So even if I have a client that is um, licensing all rights, so they want to be the exclusive rights holder, the only person who can um, exploit the illustration in any way, who can use it in any way, um, I still own the copyright. So there's a difference between an all rights licensing agreement and somebody doing a full on buyout and getting, you know, buying your copyright outright because there are other, um, other value points, other things that are of value besides just how the illustration can be used. So yes, of course, there's how the illustration can be used on a book or on a package or on some form of merchandise or whatever. But then there's the the right, which still has a lot of value to uh, be able to say that you made the illustration. And that's um, called the, the right of authorship. So if you do a, a full on actual copyright transfer where somebody is buying not just the rights to use the illustration, but is actually buying your copyright, uh, you you lose that right. You lose the ability to put it in your portfolio and say that you made it um, unless you somehow negotiate that right separately. And even if you do, then they could technically revoke that if they're the copyright holder. Uh, and then the other reason why I like to uh, retain my own copyright is that, you know, there, there are situations where somebody will do an all rights um an all rights licensing agreement, but then, you know, what happens if that company goes under or they, um, yeah, they cease to exist, then you, you still, you lose those rights and they're, they're not coming back to you. But if you have kept the, if you've kept the rights, if you are the copyright holder, holder and you have that in your contract, um, then, you know, if for some reason that company ceases to exist, then the rights to those illustrations would revert to you. So um, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, you probably know that if you watch this channel, but take everything I say uh, in on this topic with a grain of salt because copyright law, uh, intellectual property law is complicated. But from what I understand um, that, uh, yes, that is what I understand <laughs> about it. So that's why I try to always uh, retain my own copyright, even if a client is licensing pretty extensive usage. All right, uh, next and last question is from Jennifer. Jennifer asks, if I use Creative Commons images as my painting references and then post the paintings on my YouTube channel, is this okay in terms of copyright? So again, I'll just say what I just said a minute ago. I'm not a lawyer, so take this with a grain of salt. But uh, Creative Commons Zero or, or CCO licenses mean that the creator has relinquished all of their rights and the work is then essentially in the public domain. So yes, if this is the case, if you're using public domain work, it is absolutely okay to create a painting from that and share the work on your YouTube channel. Um, but just make sure that it really is a CCO, CC0 or public domain work or public domain work as some other Creative Commons licenses will still require attribution or they might um, you know have rules about whether you can use it commercially or not and if you make money like from ads on your YouTube channel even if it's not very much that could still be considered a commercial use so just make sure that it's a public domain work and in which case that's okay to use. Um, I, I don't really know that when this person asked their original question, I edited it out, but they mentioned pe Pexels, I think, and I don't really use Pexels. I always use Pixabay. And part of the reason I like Pixabay is because everything on Pixabay is public domain. I, I don't know whether that's the case on Pexels or not, but I like just being able to know that it's a public domain work. And then of course, it's always helpful if you can, you know, incorporate multiple images and not just rely on a single image. That's just another added layer of protection as well. All right, so uh, I think that is it for this video. Um, that's it for the, the pricing and copyright questions for now. Um, if you have a pricing or copyright question or really any question about illustration, you can always um, ask it to me, ask me, <laughs> ask me your question um, on the questions page of my website, which I'm sure Mag will put up on the screen at some point here or we'll link to it or, or whatever. It'll, it's always in the description box if you wanna find it that way. Um, and I can't always get back to people right away. I've had a number of situations recently where people have asked, you know, pricing questions and they're needing me to reply that day. And um, I am so happy to be a resource. I'm like really, really, I never annoyed when people ask questions. I'm very happy to have questions asked, but I can't always respond right away, like within 24 hours. So um, that's again, why I talk so much about having a resource like 
the gag guide or light box or any other place that you can, you can go to because you will have the agency. Then you'll be the one who is in the driver's seat instead of waiting for me to reply. Um, and then, you know, most of the time, the questions that I answer, the questions I'm the most likely to answer are the ones that I think a lot of people are going to get value out of. So even though we've answered some very specific pricing questions today, I think probably a number of you will find these interesting or helpful just in terms of your own um, knowledge about pricing. So yes, feel free to ask questions, keep them coming. I love having questions. And there's a number of questions that I've gotten recently that are actually going to be topics, um, solo topics for their own videos. So keep an eye out for those. Um, just keep in mind that if you're, you know, waiting on me to answer a question, you know, right away before you get back to a client, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not usually going to be able to do that, but I do try to address, um, pretty much every question at some point, as long as it's a question that, you know, will have you know value for a lot of people, or if it's a question that I, um, a question that I haven't answered before. So, uh, yes, that's it on that. And then of course I have to mention this, I'm sorry, this video is already getting so long again. But uh, I cannot let this video go by without saying thank you so much to everybody for all of your comments on the last video um, and for all of your coconuts. <laughs> if you watch that video, you know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, I just felt um, really, uh, well, it made me cry. They made me cry, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I just felt so... Um, yeah, accepted and supported and loved. And um, yeah, I just am, am deeply, deeply grateful for each of you and for everybody who watched and left comments. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm still kind of in the same place, but, um, but I'm just trying to move towards accepting it. And um, each of your each of your comments and the notes that you left really helped with that. And um, yeah, I, I am grateful for you and thank you. And uh, yeah, I would give you a hug if I could. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to wrap this up here uh, so that we can hopefully keep it under the 30 minute mark. Hope you guys are all having a great week. Um, yep, I already went over questions. Let me know if you have questions. You know where to leave them, either in the comments or um, on that page on my website. And yes, I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.